Okay, everyone, I want to welcome you to the uh, Stand for Fulbright Advocacy Training for 2019. My name is Mark Pryor, and this is Sarah Donovan. And before we get started, I just wanted to cover a few ground rules. We are going to have questions and answers. And there is a box, for those of you who can see the video, there's a box there that says chat. You just click on that. You can either click on everyone or you can click on John Bader's name. And we will see those and we'll handle those at the end. Uh, so just click on chat, click on, say, John Bader's name, or you can click on everyone if you want everyone to see the question. And uh, we will handle those at the end. The other thing I was going to say is if you're on the phone, uh, that just mechanically and technically we're not going to allow you to ask questions because there's just not a way to do it. But uh, here as we go through, there will be a way for you to email those questions and uh, John and his team at the Fulbright Association can handle those. So let's go ahead and get started. And um, again, I'm Mark Pryor. This is Sarah Donovan. We're at the Venable Law Firm uh, here in Washington, D.C. And Sarah is a registered lobbyist. I'm a former U.S. Senator. I was Attorney General before that. And uh, Venable is a, a fairly good-sized law firm. We have about 850, almost 900 lawyers. Uh, been around 119 years. We have nine offices in the U.S., but we actually have somewhat of a global practice. We don't have offices all over the world, but we do have a lot of work all over the world. In fact, uh, just today we got off a conference call where we were working on a, a project in 30 different countries working with overseas law firms. But nonetheless, you can see a few of our uh, practice areas there, but really for today's purposes, what we want you to know is we do have a lobbying practice, a government relations practice here in D.C. Go to Capitol Hill all the time, go to the administration, uh, sort of work the corridors here in Washington, D.C., and I'll always do it in a very bipartisan way. So, Sarah, you... I'll turn it over to you and sure. see if you want to say a few words. Sure. So through the course of the webinar, we'll be talking about the items you see on your screen. For those of you on the phone, we'll be talking about the mission of advocacy, what you can do to prepare for Advocacy Day, um, how to con uh, effectively convey your stories and talk about the impact, what to do on that day of advocacy, which is October 24th, and how to have an effective meeting while you're here in Washington, D.C. And then we'll follow up by talking about what to do as you're leaving as follow-up and how to do that follow-up. So we'll give you some practical advice on how to make the most of your visit to D.C. And the thing about the, the two people you have in front of you today is Sarah does this for a living. Where she goes and talks offices. And I used to be the recipient That's of all true. this. And <laughs> you I, got both sides. I had a million lobbyists <laughs> or people like you come in and talk about uh, what you're doing. So. What do we mean when we talk about advocacy? Yes, we we we, uh, we have the phones on mute if people are trying to uh, come in. But nonetheless, what do we mean when we're talking about advocacy? And what we're really talking about is something very basic, and we think of it as educating Congress about your issue. And in this case, the issue is Fulbright and the Fulbright program. And, you know, let's just be totally candid. There's actually very few congressmen and senators who are experts on Fulbright. You know, they don't spend their day 24-7 thinking about Fulbright, worried about Fulbright. You know, they're, they're doing a lot of things with their constituents, doing a lot of things with the administration, doing things on the floor of either the House or the Senate. And they, many of them understand Fulbright, but probably the vast majority really don't know a lot about Fulbright. So. What you can do here is you can introduce them to Fulbright, and really the best way to do that is to share your Fulbright story. And all of you all are Fulbrighters. You've had experience with the program. You understand how it works. And basically, one of the things we think you should convey is that Fulbright really is a bold investment in leadership, not just in the U.S., but worldwide. And you all know the statistics about how many world leaders have been Fulbrighters and how many people won the Nobel Prize, et cetera. Amazing statistics there. And you just need to convey that to these folks, but really convey it in your own words through your own experience. I think that's what they'll remember after you leave is your experiences and the stories you tell 
about the impact that Fulbright had on you, but also you as a Fulbrighter, the impact you had on other people and how that's helped people in those countries and those communities and also folks in your own community in your own country. We have someone who's saying they can't hear us. Oh. We, I can turn up the volume. Okay. Yeah. Have you gotten any other chats, John? I have not. Okay. So we, we're checking on the volume. If someone's having a volume problem, we're checking on that right now. Yeah, and so. you, can, you can chat with John anytime if you're having um, technical issues. Yeah. So um, let's move into how, you know, practically speaking, how should you prepare for your trip to D.C. and for these meetings on Capitol Hill? Uh, Fulbright um, has put together a toolkit on, on the website, so www.fulbright.org backslash toolkit, and you, there you can download um, the frequently asked questions, the message um, that should be um, conveyed to everyone that you're talking to, the Fulbright effect, which are these what we call one-pagers, which is going to have the statistics and the specific information for the states, for the members of Congress that you're meeting with. And then finally, your meeting report form, which is gonna be part of that back end, what to do afterwards. You are also going to get your schedule. And we really encourage you to research the members', members offices that you will visit. So you can know what committees they're on, particularly appropriations, which is the, the funding committees. And um, be prepared to, uh, with who you're gonna meet with. Um, we also encourage you to bring your business cards. So that's gonna be an important tool for follow-up between you and the staff person. Yeah, we think actually bringing the business cards, where they may wanna reach out to you right. specifically after the meeting, and again, get a little bit more information from you, but also get their business cards too, Absolutely. so you can follow up. And again, Sarah does this all the time, and that a lot of times the follow-up is as important as the meeting. It really is. So there might be issues that come up during the meeting that then you have follow-up on afterwards, or there may be something that comes up in the future. Maybe they're gonna have a hearing or their boss has asked them for additional information on something and they know where to go. And I always carry a stack of business cards with me at all times. I do So because you, it's just a good practice in this town um, so that people can have um, an exchange of information. Good, well let's, let me also warn you about something and that is the congressional schedule changes all the time, and I wish it didn't. I know when I was in the <laughs> Senate, you know, it, you pulled your hair out, you know, with the schedule changing all the time. They would announce, we're not going to have any votes this morning, and next thing you know, they call votes for, you know, five votes that morning and things like that. So it's very unpredictable. And just understand that going in. It's not that the staff or the congressman or senator is being rude when they change their schedule. It's just that their schedule is changing, and uh, we've had lots and lots of meetings over the years where you're actually walking and talking. Mm -hmm. You're meeting someone in a hallway, maybe outside of a, a committee room, and he or she's walking over for a vote or racing back to the office for something or whatever it happens to be. And sometimes you have to do this on the move, literally, and it's just part of it. Um, the other thing is that it is very difficult to get a meeting with the actual member. You have, you know, House members, senators. Sometimes it's just very hard to get on their schedules. Most senators and congressmen I know will try to meet with you if they can, but it just depends on what their time demands are. Or maybe more commonly, they might come in for five minutes and they have to run, mm -hmm. and you get the rest of the time with the staff, and that's okay. That's just how it is. Um, and so uh, the other thing I want to say for the Fulbright Association, because I know I talked to John about this this week, is be a little bit patient on the schedule in terms of what the the association is trying to schedule because just as the House and Senate schedule is unpredictable, that means trying to get on their calendars is unpredictable. And a lot of times, like as we sit here today, we may not know all the meetings we have, but hopefully the morning we show up, we'll have a full set of meetings. And even the day of, some things may change. So just get uh, ready to that. Uh, and so I think the bottom line is just to be flexible. Yeah, it can be a little batty sometimes. It can be, no <laughs> doubt, no doubt. So let's talk about one of the key steps in your preparation. Think of the stories that illustrate um, your experiences. For 70 years, Fulbrighters have spread the understanding and respect um, for American culture and values, built network networks of friends that anchor American national security, and brought expertise and critical language skills to every state in America. 
So these are the things, I know that you can see these on your screen too, but this is um, the three big messages on, someone asks you, what, you know, what is uh, being a full writer about, or what is, what do you do? These are the three things, three key messages you can come back to. Yeah, and I'm sure that all of you all can tell a story about making a special friendship over there when you're overseas, or even when someone is here in the U.S., some great friendship that happened here, and that, you know, hopefully those continue beyond just the Fulbright term. Um, the other thing I want to say is um, it's very helpful, I think, and very powerful when you can tell members of the House or Senate or their staffs uh, your personal stories about how you connected or and maybe still connect with individuals and communities during your Fulbright. And I think that that can be very impactful. Again, part of what we're trying to educate them on here is the fact that this program is good for America. It's almost like sending little junior diplomats out all over the world to every nook and cranny of the world, it seems like, to make friends and build that understanding and build that respect between people, individuals, but also between nations. So it's very much in the U.S. interest that we keep Fulbright uh, vibrant. Um, and, you know, you can talk about things that you learned. You can talk about some of your experiences and sharing your American experience with people there. A lot of these folks that you met overseas, they've never been to America. They may be seen it on TV or in the movies, but they really don't know a lot about it. And I think the fact that you're there, they're seeing this great example of the, you know, honestly, the best and the brightest in America and some of the great things that our country has to offer. Um, and also, Hopefully you can tell stories about how you think you change people's views of the U.S. And, you know, again, I think that's uh, very, very important as you go. One thing that we really talk to all our um, clients, whether they be Fulbright or our big corporate clients, is the stories that people can tell, the personal stories that drive home the message are really impactful, and that's what stays with um, staff and members of Congress is that those, those personal stories, uh, making it um, about um, these individual experiences is, is really, um, really very powerful. So um, how, do we, how do we connect your, uh, your stories to impact? Um, how did you, building what the Senator said, I think we talked a lot about this in the previous slide. So how did you grow and maintain your professional and personal networks? And then um, how have those evolved over time? How have international visiting Fulbrighters affected your community or institution. I think that we want to talk about this um, both coming and going, who's, who we're sending out and then who we're bringing here. And then what specific impact did your Fulbright experience have in your career and community? So again, taking those personal stories and, and conveying them to people on the Hill will really um, leave a lasting impression. Yeah, and I had an experience when I was in the Senate actually where uh, I was in a, it actually happened more than once, but one time I'll tell about is I was in a meeting and we had a foreign um, member of parliament there that was visiting the Congress and he was making the rounds to the various offices and I was talking to him and right at the very end of the conversation, uh, he got this little twinkle in his eye and he said, you're from Arkansas. And I said, I am. And I thought he was going to tell some story about Bill Clinton because everybody <laughs> in the world knows Bill Clinton's from Arkansas. And he said, I'm a Fulbright scholar. Really? And when he did that, it was just, he was so proud. And you could tell it just absolutely changed his life and set him on the course to where he was today. And he was just proud of that connection he had to America. And you, you all will have similar stories uh, like that. Um, so anyway, you all know the numbers, and we're going to talk about these a little bit more uh, as we go, but about $272 million in U.S. money uh, goes to pay for the Fulbright program, but there's another $100 million that actually comes from overseas that we leverage and that foreign governments uh, put in, and many of you all know this about the binational commissions and how every country, for the most part, every country has a binational commission and how all that works. And so many other countries contribute, and in some cases contribute even more than we do in, in some circumstances uh, on that specific piece of the Fulbright program. So um, 
anyway, there's we, we know how this works. You all know how this works, but it would be good if you were able to explain it, if asked, um, you know, just how the money works. And that really does lead into uh, really the kind of the ask and the, re the purpose for your visit. Yeah, and I think one of the nice things about the talking about the investments that other countries make is that they realize that um, it's not just us paying into something for everyone's benefit, but there's actually, we're all contributing to the pot of money. Right. And that money is going to individual states and communities. So it's being spent here in the country. Right. And so it makes it more meaningful for those members of Congress and their staff. So what are your take home messages? And so I just wanna step back. The take home messages are the takeaways or the um, key messages. These are the ones you wanna make sure that you speak to these in your meetings. So you might take a meandering path, you know, you might share personal stories like we've talked about, um, but what you wanna drive home, a consistent, tight message to these offices. And that's what we put up here um, on the screen. So you are living proof that Fulbright is a good investment for America. You talk about Fulbright's positive impact continues for the lifetime of each one of these grantees. Like the gentleman that you talked to that was in foreign parliament, he kept that experience with him for the rest of his life, and right. he and, and informed other things that he did. And then the payoff for American taxpayers, because getting down to it, we're talking, we're going up to the hill to ask Congress to spend money, you know, taxpayers' money. So let's talk about why that's a good idea and why that's a good investment. Mm -hmm. So the payoff for American taxpayers is this stronger alliance and the appreciation for the rest of the world of American values. Right. So it's a little bit crass to talk about money, but that's really what we're there to do. Right. Um, and so we just want to make sure that these offices understand that this is a good use, this is a good investment. Yeah, Fulbright furthers the U.S.'s foreign policy goals. And I'm not sure they always understand that, right. but after they think about it for a while, after they hear your stories, they're, that's going to sink in with them. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing I was going to say to follow up on something Sarah said is that you don't have unlimited time, so you want to keep it concise. You want to know your talking points. Don't worry if you think you're repeating yourself and your little group is going to hear the same thing <laughs> yeah. three or four times. That's okay. It's that's all right. right. That, that's okay. Get a good message and stick with it, but be mindful of time because, again, the schedule changes, and you may only get maybe 10 minutes. Hopefully, you right. get 30 minutes, but you know, a lot of times you, you get very short windows, especially if there's a member involved. Usually, the member will just come and go. Uh, they don't get a lot of downtime, and they're pulled in many, many different directions. Okay, before I go to the next slide, I want to remind folks that we are taking questions, and some of those are already coming in. But what you do is you, if you can see the video or see the screen, um, what you do is you go to the chat and click on that. Click on either everyone or click on uh, John Bader's name and ask you to type your question in. <coughs> And if you're on the phone, unfortunately, we don't have the technology for you to ask questions, but we can follow up on that uh, after the call. And also, this slideshow is going to be made available after the call as okay. well. So let's go to the next slide. So, all right, at 8.30 a.m. on October 24th, uh, we are all going to meet in the Capitol Visitor Center, and that's at First and East Capitol. So for have you, you ever been down there? I have been. Okay. <laughs> yeah, many times. So for those of you who are not that familiar with the Capitol, you've never been to that part of Washington, D.C., or maybe not even D.C. at all, let me help you visualize it. So, you know, the Capitol doesn't have a back door. It has two fronts. It has the east front and the west front. <laughs> so you're on the east front, okay? And if you're looking at the front door of the Capitol underneath there in the in the yard in the courtyard out below you'll see some doors down underground basically you walk down into those and that's where the Capitol Visitor Center is so it's right in front of the Capitol and you kind of go down and you'll see the doors it's very obvious when you stand there but as you're looking at those front doors over your right shoulder blade is going to be the US Supreme Court believe it or not you're going to, be able to turn around and look right mm -hmm. at the Supreme Court over your left shoulder blade is going to be the Library of Congress so you are right there and you're going to see those three buildings right there. So you just walk in that door, 8:30, and when you're at that point, when you go down under, you're in the Capitol Visitor Center. You're not actually technically in the Capitol building itself. You're in the Visitor Center. Go down there. Go through security like anything else. They have magnetometers, et cetera, check purses, and all those kind of things. 
Um, so you, you go down there, and once you go get through security, you're going to go to CDC 200. And just ask anybody where it is. It's called Congressional Auditorium. It's real easy to find. There's signs. If you can't, don't see the signs, just ask people. There'll be people there in red jackets. They'll walk you there, point you in the right direction. And when you get in to the CDC 200, you're going to sort of check in with the Fulbright Association staff, and they're going to give you your leave-behind packets. And those are some of the things that Sarah said mm -hmm. a few moments ago, like the state-by-state, -state, the one-pagers, things like that. And there's going to be a continental breakfast there. And then um, after that is over, there's going to be a briefing. And, oh, hold on, John is flashing me a note that says, do your best to get to the security there at the Capitol Visitor Center at 8 o'clock. This, this, at the latest. Yeah, the slide says <laughs> 8.30, but that's really when the right. meeting starts. So right. try, do your best to get it's there like the at 8 o'clock. It is. You it have is. to go through security. So get there at 8 o'clock or even a little bit earlier if you can. Get there at 8, go in, be in the meeting by 8.30. Uh, there's going to be a briefing. It's going to be a continental breakfast. You're going to meet with your team and your team leaders. You're going to kind of do, kind of do some quick run-throughs and sort of uh, go through that. And at some point, you're going to fan out and go and do your meeting. So basically, 8 o'clock, Capital Visitor Center. That's the most important thing you need to remember. Okay. Um, so as the day goes on, like the center said earlier, remain flexible if an office asks you to come back or meet in the hallway. I mean, this happens to me. So all the, all the time, all the time. So, you know, it's a little disorienting because the hallways can be noisy and it can be a little strange trying to talk about something that's important to you in the hallway, but it happens all the time. So my, our, one of the things we want you to know is that uh, this is normal um, and that um, your meeting is important to them. So they're just trying to fit it all in and make it work. So um, you can also give each other feedback as you go. So, you know, like, like you mentioned, we're, you're going to be kind of talking the same thing over and over again, and only you will know that. Right. Sorry, they don't know you're repeating right. yourself. They don't know that, um, that you've been telling the same story to everybody. It's new to matter. them, Doesn't so don't, don't feel, right. don't, don't feel self-conscious about that. But talk to each other. So maybe you could tighten it up a little bit. Maybe... Um, uh, oh, oops, we forgot to get one of those talking points. Right. You know, this is um, collaborative, and the nice thing about doing more than one of these is you get better as you go. Um, there's a number to call or text Chaz is, um, uh, if you have any problems or questions as, like, the a point person. And then um, don't forget to eat or drink. Yes. You, there will likely be snacks and coffee and tea or uh, water offered in a lot of these offices, but most of these... Senate and House office buildings have a cafeteria, and so if you have some downtime, we encourage you to go. There's lots of food to eat. There's going to be um, little uh, coffee stands. Um, so just it's this is you know can be a little taxing. So yeah. take care of yourself and have a good time. Don't forget to take pictures. That's right. And enjoy yourself. That's so right. this is meant to be a positive experience. And the other thing is be mindful of your shoes. <laughs> yes. Right. Because you're going to be walking Isn't that on, the truth? <laughs> on marble floors all day, pretty much. Counting the pavement, as they say. Counting the pavement. Yeah. And it really, you know, it, your feet can be pretty tired by the end of the day. So wear something comfortable. Yep. Uh, you're going to be up and down, moving around a whole lot. So just get ready for that. Um, remember that your time is limited. Uh, you see on the screen introductions, kind of who you are, you know, where you live, where you did your Fulbright, you know, whatever is appropriate there. Uh, what you do now, again, show those business cards. And talk about uh, the fact that you're at the Fulbright Association, and that's an independent nonprofit with alums and friends nationwide. And the reason I mention that is some people may think, wait a minute, are these people from the State Department? Are they federal employees? Right. And you're not. No. So anyway, you're there really on behalf of the Fulbright Association. So continuing, uh, what else to do with the meeting? Remind them, uh, or <laughs> remind them that you're there to thank them for support. Yes. Sorry, I had to read that again. So one of the first things that we do after passing out business cards, introduce ourselves, is really thank them for their support, either now or in the future. We thank you for right. your past support or, um, you know, thank you, thank you for taking the meeting, thank you for your um, work on XYZ, and really help them to better understand the important impact um, of Fulbright 
uh, VOI program. And then talk about your story. So this is an opportunity to tell a concise story of your experience and try to tie it back to those three messages we talked about earlier. Um, and that's, that's really the value that bringing to, your, you are bringing to the meeting is your story and your experience. So, um, you know, they handle maybe the policy, maybe they handle, handle appropriations funding, you know, they're not subject matter experts in, in Fulbright, nor have they had the experience that you have. So please, you know, make it personal. Right. That's, that's really the value. Yeah, and, and also, what Sarah said earlier, is don't meander around and take <laughs> 10 minutes to tell the story. You really need to... Don't tell a story like me. Get to the point. <laughs> no, no, no. It's not You're a great storyteller. Thank <laughs> you. Um, now, the next slide here is to give them the documents, basically, and give them sort of the, the ask, the message, the ask message document, but also, you know, again, you thank them for their support. What really the message is this year is we want the same level funding as we've had previously, uh, $271 million for fiscal year 20, and um, there's certainly it's certainly true that the administration has proposed a big cut. Uh, I would not be critical of the president. I don't want to do that. I don't want to be partisan at all. Mm -hmm. But just say, look, we, we think that um, we hope you'll oppose that cut. Fulbright does so many good things, and it's a, it, like I said, it, it, it furthers U.S. foreign policy needs and interests, and it's a big part of our diplomacy. And professional diplomats and even military folks all over the world or in the U.S. know how important Fulbright is to them and how important it is to American interests. That's right. So um, as you need them, you can refer to the frequently asked questions of the, of the program. And so there will be a, a, pay, a paper in your uh, leave behinds. So we talk about a leave behind that is usually a a physical folder, and it's got, I'm using a lot of jargon today. Yeah, that's all right. It's got what we call the one pagers behind them, so they're usually a front and a back. And um, you can reference these during your meeting if, it, if, you find, if you find that it helps you stay focused. Um, but one of the things in there will be your frequently asked questions. And so then you can talk about these specific funding levels, um, the 271.5 million, which we're asking for level funding for appropriations. We can talk about when it was started, how many countries it operates in, and logistically how it functions. Right. And, and as you also well know, there's been a lot of news. There's always a lot of news about what's going on in foreign countries. Mm -hmm. And it could be that they bring up a foreign country. Good, pretty good chance that Fulbright is in that country. <laughs> Not every single one, but pretty good chance Fulbright's in that country. And it, it helps us, uh, you know, it, it helps build the bonds between us and that country. Okay. And you see some of the stats there about how many alums there are worldwide, 380,000. We, and in the, in the packet or in the, on the website, on the fact part of the website, you'll see, you know, how many foreign leaders there are and how many Nobel Prize winners, et cetera, et cetera, there are. So Fulbright said an amazing story. So um, I would say stay very positive. Uh, again, don't criticize the administration. This is not your chance to tee off on the Congress or the State Department or U.S. policy or the President or, 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 or anybody nope. else. This is not <laughs> the time to do that. Uh, the, the truth is that Fulbright enjoys very broad bipartisan support and deep support on both sides of the aisle. Let's keep it that way, okay? Let's keep very public bipartisan support. And so I would probably try not to mention the president or really any personalities, you yeah. know, not Nancy Pelosi or anybody like that. And that's Just, not even something that's unique to this. No. This is what we tell all our clients that's right. as they're preparing for, for what we call fly-ins is that you want to stay as positive as possible. Um, you want to stay politically neutral. Yep. Don't want to bring up politics or right races or who's running for president, who is the president. That's right. Let's just stick to the issues because that's really, really what we're there for. And, um, and that's advice we give everyone. Well, it's, it's easy to fall into that trap. Let's say you, you like President Trump and you go into a Republican office and you may want to sort of talk, you know, GOP talk with them. Again, this is not the that's format. That's just not the time. That. It's just, just not, not good to do that. Uh, let's see. Um, go ahead. Oh, okay, sure. So stay focused. Um, don't bring up other issues like we were talking about. Just keep it, just keep on message. Use your time wisely. 
uh, make it personal, like we've been underlining. Um, the memorable meetings are the ones where people are sharing their personal experience and sharing that impact, not necessarily budget. So yes, the budget is important. We want to get the ask in. We want level funding for next fiscal year. Um, but really, that's the ask, but then what does that mean? Yeah. And then be yourself and have fun. So there's no perfect way. To, you can tell already that we probably have different communication style, even though we work well together. But everyone's got their own way to do this, and there's no one way. There's you know, it's as unique as the people um, that are part of, you know, they're registered lobbyists or people are, like you that are coming into town. So be yourself, be natural, um, and by just by being there, you're helping. Yeah. You're right. making a difference just by being there. Absolutely. And we're going to have Q&A here in just a few minutes, and uh, some of those questions are coming in. We appreciate that. One thing I would say uh, here is also be ready. Some of these congressional staff you talk to, they're they're sort of walks, you know, and they'll start asking you about the State Department account in the appropriations bill. Don't worry about all that stuff. Yeah. That you know, you're a citizen, you're a layman, you're not supposed to know that. Don't don't stress over that. Just stick with the talking points and we can always get back with them on the more technical grounds. That's right. If that's what they need. So you know, back to one of the earlier messages we said, thank them for their time, thank them for their attention, thank them for their public service. And it's really nice to compliment the staff because they don't get too many of those. That's true. You know, a lot of times they're kind of the whipping boy for, you know, whatever's going on in Washington. So this is the email address I wanted to share with you. If you need more information, if you can't answer something, email something to advocacy at fulbright.org. Advocacy at fulbright.org. Email those questions. Again, these technical questions, these detailed things that you don't know all the details on, that's okay. Send it there, and we will try to reach back in touch with those people. Of course, it helps us a lot if you can give us the email address of the people we need to check back with. Uh, that helps a lot. So anyway, just um, be sure to thank them, tell them how much we appreciate their support for the program over the years, and also be sure to leave that leave behind packet so they can look at that after you leave and, um, you know, hopefully make good decisions when it comes time to vote for That's the corporations. Right. Yep. Um, also, as you leave, get their business cards. Hopefully, you exchange them at the beginning of the meeting and send a follow-up and include them um, in any chapter invitations. You know, perhaps the, you met with someone that um, is in your, you, you're in their district or in their state. Um, you can speak from experience that mm -hmm. members love to go to constituent events. Uh, I'm sure they'd be happy to go. And um, there's a note here to find out the office's hashtag. And so another thing that members and their staffs love are any chance they, they have to really um, share positive um, constituent meetings or um, um, talk about that on social media, that's a very important part of, of what they do. So. It, there's also a note here to include a photo of the business card with your team's report. So as you're preparing those reports, take a snapshot with your phone of the business card of the staff person, include that so that everyone's got the right information. And then if you have the chance to meet with a member of Congress, get a group photo. Um, they'd be happy to take those. Sometimes, especially in the Senate, they have professional photographers that kind of roam around that take these pictures. But get a photo and send it to that advocacy email. So, um, and even if you meet with a staff member, get a picture of them um, in the hall with a flag and the member's name signed. So these are all important tools that can be used on the back end to help promote the Fulbright Association's fly-in day and, and all the hard work that you did while you were here. Yeah, it builds Fulbright's brand. It also Absolutely. helps that member of Congress, yep. their constituents back home say, hey, you know, hey, so-and-so we'll we'll congressman, he's Absolutely. working up there, yes, right? right. <laughs> So uh, after the meetings, uh, there's going to be a meeting report form. It's on the toolkit website. That's very important. The leaders will do that, but it's very important that everybody contributes to that, and you all talk about that. Again, we talked about posting pictures. Again, this is usually done after the fact. And then it's very nice to write them a thank you note, it could probably an email, with CCing that advocacy at Fulbright.org. And it'd be great if you could do that as soon as you walk out, or certainly you know within 24 hours, um, and 
it's just it just reinforces that Fulbright is a, is a good organization, and these folks, you just you know, we appreciate them. So it's just, that, all that's good, good etiquette, and just good good tactics. Okay. All right. Good luck. Yeah. Let's take some questions. So now we have some questions. I know that you you may not see him, but John Bader's here, and he's been fielding questions and trying to consolidate questions, uh, condense them down to a few questions here. But John, what's the first question? So the first question is, uh, what if they ask about local benefits? Uh, why would the Fulbright be good for my district or my state? Um, what what do we say about that? I think there's that one pager that every state, it's on the toolkit page, you can type, you can click on there. I, personally, if I were going, I'd probably, I'd probably print one for each state office that I was going to, like if I was going to a congressman for Virginia yep. and then another one from Arkansas, one from Tennessee, I'd probably print all those three and have them handy. They're going to be in the packet anyway, but I might have some notes on there that I would work on, uh, you know, before the meeting, uh, before the advocacy day. and. One thing you can talk about is you can look at the number of foreign students that are at your current universities in that state. And guess what? The Fulbright Program State Department is paying for tuition. Those people are spending money in the community. So there's these, there's these economic benefits to the Fulbright Program because a lot of the program is reinvesting money back into the U.S. And that's something that uh, we should keep in mind. Mm -hmm. Uh, question two is, uh, can you tell us more about follow-up? Uh, we know we want to send a thank you note. We've got that. Uh, what other kinds of things could we do in the coming months uh, to either build that relationship or just be sure that they're paying attention, especially as the next fiscal year, uh, not the fiscal year, but the appropriation cycle starts? Yes. So, yes, very important. I want to underline it. You know, write your thank you notes, and it's okay if more than one person writes a thank you note, but just get the thank you note in. And you can use um, that information so you can check in with your staffer if you've got an update. Maybe they asked you for some additional information. Um, you can coordinate with Fulbright Association on sending the information back. And then as appropriation season kicks off, it'll be the beginning of the year. We'll see the president's budget comes up, and then you see the requests start coming in. You'll start seeing hearings. You can use that as a chance to check back in with those staffers that you met with and remind them that we're asking for level funding and we hope that they'll consider um, putting in the request that's important and that thank you very much for meeting with us. And by the way, they're not really in an appropriation cycle right now. No. But, but this is next. some of this will be for, for next year. Correct. But you're planting very important seeds right now. And these people will, again, come away with good impression. It's good to keep that email, like she said, and keep the lines of communication open. Uh, it's worth noting that we're coming back to the Hill on March 26th, so that'll be more sure. in the in the sweet spot for appropriations, mm -hmm. so there'll be a time for us to follow up. A third question is about trade-offs. What if a, a staff member or a member were to say, why should I support Fulbright when there's all these other things that uh, could have a great impact too, whether that's a, a different kind of foreign policy program or foreign aid for children or uh, defense, uh, what are, do we offer a counter argument or do we just tell them that's, that's for you to decide? I think the best thing there is to focus on Fulbright. We know that Fulbright has been effective for 70 years. It's been on the books for a long, long time. And all those other programs were probably good. I mean, you know, who knows all the details of each one of those programs, but certainly Fulbright has a proven track record. And we know this because we see it all the time. Again, our, our diplomatic corps, our military folks, they run into Fulbrighters all the time that were that are overseas, that were educated here and have gone back, and now they're the leaders of those countries. There's just nothing like Fulbright. And again, not to take away from any other programs, we're not trying to do that, but we need to fund Fulbright because it's a big investment in the future. You can deflect, just as you just said. That's a great question. I'd like to tell you about Fulbright. <laughs> yeah, that's right, right. Right. All right, our last question and um, is, is this. Um, uh, I've never done this before. Uh, I'm kind of nervous about going to Capitol Hill. Everybody seems so formal and important. These hallways are intimidating. Um, how do I cope with the fact that I'm I'm a little nervous. My first time doing this. That's okay. We were all first time doing it too. I have to say that 
being yourself and being um, your whole self, even if that is a little bit intimidating, a little bit nervous, um, it makes it more personal, it makes it human. Um, and I think it leaves actually a positive impression because all day long, um, staff and members have to meet with people like us who were a little bit maybe sometimes too professional about it. And so you coming in um, as a citizen, a private citizen with a story to share, I think actually is a, is a positive and you should embrace that. And you can ask questions. I mean, yeah. if you're, I, I think staff actually really enjoys, just like I love giving tours to people that haven't been here before, staff loves meeting with people that haven't been here before. Absolutely. So use it to your advantage. Yeah, and also think about it this way. This is your chance to exercise some good American citizenship. That's right. Because in the Constitution, we are given the constitutional right to petition our government, and that's what you're doing here. You're going to Washington to talk about a program that's important to you, that changed your life, and you want to see it continue to work, not just in the U.S., but all around the world. So you're, you're exercising constitutional right here, and they're really here for, for this purpose. They're here to listen to you and to help you in whatever way they can. And I think what you'll find is, like I said before, very broad-based support for Fulbright. That's right. Fulbright is a, is a marquee program, really. And, of course, it is subject to budget pressures, like sure. everything else, you know, it all is. But um, you're going to find a lot of good feeling about Fulbright. That's right. And any time that you have a question, you can ask anyone around you for help, whether it's the Capitol Police officers, staff walking around the hallway, maybe other lobbyists. Um, yeah. If you have trouble finding a room, um, just ask. And you'd be surprised at how friendly people are and how much they're willing to help. Right. Have confidence. Absolutely. I agree with that. Well, we want to thank Sarah and Mark for uh, this very educational and helpful training session, and we wish all of you the best. Uh, thank you for participating, and we look forward to seeing you next week on October 24th. Thank you so much. Thank you all. Thank you.